plane when using autopilot. Situated here, all right. So I am Ben Lockwood. I am a lead systems engineer at Concurrency. Uh, I've been with Concurrency for just a little over a year now. Uh, in my previous spots, I was a infrastructure manager. So I've run the whole gamut of being responsible for everything in an IT infrastructure. So we're all very busy. We all have a lot going on. So why don't we make this a little bit easier on ourselves and move to that modern management to simplify deployment and management of devices. So same old, same old, why are we doing the same thing that we've always been doing? Some of those common scenarios that we've used for deploying devices are, are gold images. We've built them from scratch and we do some domain to domain migrations. When we look at gold images, there's lots of steps in order to get that up and running. And once we have the infrastructure built, then we also need to do all the steps listed here. So it's also time consuming to test. And as soon as we get that gold image set up, there, there tends to be changes that need to be made to it, such as there's updates or new applications that we need to put on there. As we talk about build from scratch, if you're installing from a Windows ISO, go through that out of box experience. You need to install all those updates and drivers and applications. Uh, you need to domain join it and then have group policy manage all those policies on the desktop. And th typically then there's no consistency across the organization of how those devices are deployed. As we look at a domain to domain migration, we typically see these with mergers and acquisitions. There's a lot of setup and configuration that is needed with this. Uh, you need to migrate the user profiles, make sure all the ACLs are correct so the users have access to everything that they have on their desktop. But we can do this a lot better with an Azure AD join in Intune, and we'll talk about that use case near the end of the presentation. So what's wrong with all these options? Well. They're time consuming. They need a lot of infrastructure in order to set them up. We need playbooks and runbooks for anybody who's on the team so they know how to deploy the different options. We need to train our staff. And then we also have management and maintenance that goes along with this. So we can do better. So let's talk about the modern managed story. The modern management, what does that mean? We're putting the cloud intelligence at the core. We improve the end user experience by being able to just deploy it right to them. We're able to quickly solve issues because we're using data-driven that's built into Intune. This simplifies administration. We use a single pane of glass. And as new devices come out, we're easily able to manage them and deploy them with speed. And lastly, we use security through that zero trust model and make sure that our data and applications are secure. As we look at the way we manage things on-premises, we really have traditional OS deployment, app management, GPOs for management, and other things as well. So as we tend to move towards the cloud and do that cloud attach, we build in all these other uh, advantages that come with that, such as unified, unified endpoint management, the ability to do Windows, iOS, and Android all in one single pane of glass. Modern policies, making sure that we're able to apply security baselines and admin templates. The modern provisioning that we talk about, the ability to do that with autopilot, and we're gonna go deep, a deeper dive into that later on. And then we can use things like conditional access and compliance to make sure that the devices that we are using follow our policies and they're, they're in a good state in order to uh, connect to our data. So what does that path look like? The first part is enabling Azure AD join and then configuring Microsoft Endpoint Manager so that way we, we can do autopilot provisioning. How do we migrate data from users' computers from an uh, old device to a new device? And then 
some information on how you can get started. So what is Azure AD Join? So let's talk about device identity. Computers have really three device identities in a corporate device. There's domain join, hybrid Azure AD join, or Azure AD join. The first two are would fall under the hybrid Azure AD join if they're connected to Azure AD. Azure AD join is really just joining Azure AD. There is no longer a computer account that's associated with it, with it in Active Directory. And over these last two years, we've seen a change in how people work. And that reliance on CorpNet, the on-premises Active Directory, has really diminished. So the goal for us is to really join those devices to Azure AD and simplify how we deploy devices, access our organizational apps and resources, and use cloud-based management of those work-owned devices. So where is that trust for the devices? Well, the on-prem is, or the hybrid Azure AD join is trusted because it's do domain join. For the, our other corporate devices, when they're Azure AD join, their trust becomes if the device is compliance with, compliant with our MDM policies. And then BYOD devices, we're not gonna talk much about that today, but they're also trusted if they comply with that MDM policy. Just a few things to compare on the Azure AD join versus domain join. Authentication on the domain side, it's Kerberos and NTLM. With an Azure AD join, it's doing a primary refresh token and then all the authentication happens through HTTPS. For Azure AD join devices, we don't need that line of sight to the on-prem active directory. Whereas a domain join, we still need that for things like group policy, and the password updates. For device management, domain join is mainly through those group policies, like we just said. And Azure AD join, we're going to use some sort of MDM like Intune. And then set up on domain join, you're mainly doing those imaging. And we're going to be talking about that autopilot uh, provisioning going forward. So what are some of those benefits of Azure AD join? One is we don't have that relationship or dependency on Windows AD. We can protect from lateral movement. We're able to do the MDM management. And through MDM management, we're also using zero trust to secure everything. We'll have SSO for both cloud and on-premises resources. And then we can use conditional access, passwordless, and Windows Hello for authentication. So no dependency on Windows AD. So we no longer would need an, a VPN to connect. Uh, we don't need that line of sight for authentication. We can do automatic device licensing through the Microsoft Cloud. We're able to enable password reset right at the logon screen for users. And all that authentication happens over HTTPS. And then if you still do need to access on-prem resources, we can do that if we're using a hybrid environment with Azure AD Connect and syncing that user account from on-prem to Azure AD. And because of that, all the ACLs that you have on-prem, those are username and password based. Most people don't use computer certificates to access uh, or computer accounts to access on-prem resources. So you'd still have access to all of that information. There's a strong security case for Azure AD join as well. Securing Active Directory, obviously that's not an easy task as I'm sure a lot of you know about. Uh, lateral movements in on-prem domains, are, that's one of the most common attack vectors through NTLM and Kerberos. So if you've ever had a pen test, that's typically the first thing that uh, the hackers for the pen test will go after. So if we're phasing out Kerberos and NTLM, we're really removing that attack vector that really starts to happen after this line here. So even though Barbara here would still open and click on that link and it may affect her computer, it's not they're not going to be able to obtain those other credentials and move laterally across the domain and find out what our domain administrator is and, 
and where the domain controller is and, and affect us that way. So it really shuts it down right at that first and individual computer. So zero trust. Zero trust is never trust, always verify. So why would we use zero trust? It really makes us productive from anywhere and everywhere. We can use any device at any time. With cloud migration, we're making an intelligent security for today's complex environments. And then risk mitigation, we can close those security gap gaps quickly and minimize that risk of the lateral movement. And as far as zero trust principles go, we always wanna verify. We wanna check and make sure that where you're connecting from, no matter what device, uh, what where you're located at, that's all being verified before given access to uh, resources. With using least privileged access, we can always use just in time and just enough privileges. And then we should always assume breach. So with these zero trust principles, we're really saying every access request is fully authenticated, authorized and encrypted before we grant that access. When we talk about the SSO to the cloud and on-prem resources, so for the on-prem, you still need line of sight to CorpNet. So you may need a VPN in order to make that connectivity, but as long as you have that UNC path or the web server, you would still be able to access those resources via the Azure AD Connect Sync and having that um, user account sync between the two Active Directories. If you don't want full line of sight, we can also use a single sign-on with Azure AD Application Proxy. And this, with this, we can publish on-premises web apps. And so we don't need a DMZ or VPN connectivity. It supports the single sign-on by doing the authentication at Azure Active Directory when you sign in. And we're able to also support multi-factor auth to those apps then and have conditional access policies to make sure that the data is secured. MDM management gives us that cloud base and cloud scale to really manage our devices in a efficient manner. It reduces that reliance on our on-premises infrastructure. With the cloud scale and we're able to get more data captured and analyzed, which means better analytics for us, and it gives us the agility and ability to iterate effectively. So as new things come along, everything gets updated with the cloud. So we're able to apply new policies as new technologies advance. And it gives us that single pane of glass to do all of our management from. Conditional access. So if you're not familiar with this, really what this does is looks at all these different signals so where is the user or who is the user? Where are they coming in from? What device are they using? Which application? And it looks at this real-time risk and figures out where do I want, what do I want to do with that? Do I want to allow access? Do I need to require MFA, limit access or block access? We can even um, force a password reset if necessary. And then once it figures out if all of this is safe and it's the correct person, the correct identity, it allows that access to those apps and data. Windows Hello for Business. So passwords are difficult to remember and they're often reused. And really, we want to work towards that process of removing passwords completely. So this replaces passwords with a strong two-factor authentication on devices. There's a two-step verification needed when the user enrolls. And then if you're using a PIN that, or biometrics, that's tied specifically to the device. So unless someone has that specific device, they would not be able to log in with your PIN or your biometrics, similar to how you use iOS devices or Android devices with um, Face ID and things like that. So what does that journey look like to remove passwords from daily use? A few things to, that you can do today is enable MFA, do true uh, SSO, deploy that Windows Hello for Business, 
enable passwordless credentials, and improve your password management. And then these different steps here, you can look at and see in the next three months, calendar year, and, and beyond, what are some of those steps that you can really do in order to get to a true passwordless environment? So some considerations for Azure AD joined devices. Supported scenarios are SSO across the on-prem and cloud apps, using conditional access like we discussed shortly uh, before, self-service password reset, and Windows Hello for Business. And then this is supported on Windows 10 and 11 devices, as well as Server 2019 virtual machines running in Azure. And all these applicable configurations with Azure ID um, can also be done with third-party IDPs as well. And a few things to consider and know when you're moving to an Azure AD joint device, you can take your on-premises group policies with Intune and use the group policy analytics to take a look at what policies would be easily transferable into Intune. Um, my advice on that would be that instead of just moving all your policies, take a look at what you currently have because a lot of those group policies could have been set up like 10 years ago and they're still there and nobody actually really knows what they're doing. So start off from scratch and build your policies as they're needed. Um, printer discovery requires universal print setup. If you're going to be doing RDP to Azure AD joined devices, know that it's only from other Azure AD joined or hybrid joined devices. And then on-prem apps, requiring machine authentication. So things like Wi-Fi, where you're doing uh, pre-logon with RADIUS and the computer certificate, that won't work with an Azure AD join device. And same with VPNs. So you could consider switching to SAML auth through Azure AD with things like a Cisco AnyConnect. Uh, we've worked with a few clients who have done that and it's worked out really, really well. You also then can uh, layer on MFA with that as well. So now we're gonna talk just a little bit about Microsoft Endpoint Manager, which at times is also called Intune. So uh, we'll hear those interchanged uh, quite frequently. So one of the enrollment options here is auto enrollment. And what that does, as soon as it, um, you enroll it with Azure AD join, it enrolls it in into Intune for management. So this is nice, so that way you don't have to do another method of getting that device in there on management. Um, it supports hybrid environments and single sign-on. So if you have, if you are enrolling Azure AD join devices, I highly encourage this. And with Endpoint Manager, we can manage that entire device lifecycle. So from the enroll where we're using things like autopilot for zero touch provisioning, or um, if you're joining iPads and iOS devices, you can also do that as well as Android. On the configure side, this is where we're setting up our policies for things like um, BitLocker and VPN and things like that. In Protect, we're making sure that those devices are compliant before they're actually coming onto our resources. And then Support and Retire, we're able to revoke access or perform selective wipes, retire the device, and provide that remote assistant that, that users need. So as we talked about Zero Trust before, these are the controls that you can use within Microsoft Endpoint Manager in order to enforce that zero trust policies. So with identities, we can enforce single sign-on, conditional access, MFA. As far as endpoints, we have antivirus and firewall, uh, disk encryption, EDR, and ASR, and account protection as well. For app protection, uh, we can configure app protection policies and app configuration policies. A lot of that really pertains to iOS and Android, where we're able to make sure that no data is leaving our applications. Uh, can, we can containerize them so that 
personal devices have access only to uh, the personal stuff and the, the corporate apps only have access to the corporate data. For protecting our data, we use some disk encryption as well as some DLP policies to make sure that no, no accidental leaks of sensitive corporate data. And lastly, as far as infrastructure is concerned, we can use conditional access policies and threat and vulnerability management to make sure that our infrastructure is secure and some network protection policies, as well as access controls and VPNs in order to protect that data. So as we look at that device lifecycle, really the enroll and configure are the two areas where we need to have those dependencies set up for autopilot to fully function. So we need to make sure that we have an autopilot profile, an enrollment status page, any device configuration so that as that device gets set up, it starts to layer on those applications and configurations. And then in the configure, we're really worried, looking at um, applications and um, things like that. So those are the dependencies for setting up autopilot. Configuration profiles, this is like your group policy. So we're able to define rules and settings that users and devices must meet. Um, and then we can use those to set up things like BitLocker or uh, intranet pages, um, all sorts of different things that you would see normally in a group policy. Those are things that can get set up with the configuration profiles. Microsoft also uh, has some security baselines that are out there. So if you need to take a look at those, that would get you probably about 75% of the way to a very secure device. But every organization is different. So I wouldn't just turn those on without checking and seeing what those baselines have in them and making sure that we can utilize the right uh, settings for our organization. And now, just in the last few months, there's been a settings catalog that's been released. And you can see some of the uh, pictures here, all those different settings that you can configure with those as well. We can also set up compliance policies. So these define the rules and settings that users must meet in order to be compliant. And we can use those compliance policies then with conditional access policies to make sure that the device is compliant before you get access to any of that information. So these can include actions like encryption is required or the firewall is required, defender is enabled, and uh, real-time protection is enabled. And then what is that Microsoft Defender for Endpoint uh, Risk Score before we would allow anybody to have access to that information? And then Windows apps. So we have a few different options in order to push apps to the devices. We can do the Microsoft Store app. Uh, you can have Microsoft 365 apps. So if you've used the Office deployment tool before, this makes it a lot easier to configure that. You don't need an XML file or, or um, and to run it through the setup.exe slash configure and things like that. So this makes it a lot easier to deploy that. Um, with Microsoft Edge, we can set and make sure that they're on the latest version. And then you can do other things like a line of business app, which is like an MSI file. But the line of business apps really limit us to things such as we can't use detection methods or configure error, error codes or dependencies. With the Windows 32 app, we can do that uh, a lot better. We have greater control over the deployment for the app. It allows a detection method or, and dependencies, and it allows us to uh, set that um, uninstall line as well. And it uses an Intune wrapper to deploy multiple files. So you could use an MSI with a transform file or an MSP. The thing to keep in mind, though, is if you use a mix of line of business apps as well as Win32 apps, that that can cause issues with autopilot. 
So make sure you're choosing wisely on which one you're going to use with autopilot. So out with the old, in with the new. Let's look at deployment with autopilot. So as we talked about a little earlier, that traditional way of deploying Windows would be you build that custom image, you deploy the image to the computer, and then deploy it to the end user. But that's a lot of time and infrastructure that's needed. So with the benefits of autopilot, we have that easy provisioning for end users, optimized IT interaction, reduction of infrastructure for provisioning and imaging, and no maintenance of images or drivers. We're able to layer on those applications and policies, and then it gives us a simple redeployment. Let's look at those a little bit more. Optimize IT interaction. So you have, you're able to look out that single pane of glass for management. You don't need to keep up the images or builds anymore. We can drop ship a computer directly from a vendor like SHI or Insight or CDW and directly to an end user, and they're able to log in and get set up. Or we, in the IT department, we can just receive that and then distribute it right back out to the user. We don't have to even, all we have to do is open it and set it on their desk. So how many of you set up any of these Alphabet Soup uh, services? I bet you it probably didn't happen on the first try. It probably took you a few weeks, maybe a few months to really get all of this stuff set up. Well, we don't need any of this stuff anymore at all. So it's going to really make that deployment and set up, and we don't need to patch any of these systems anymore. Uh, it just really makes it a lot easier on the IT uh, staff to really get rid of all of that stuff and just use autopilot. So we don't have to maintain the driver and maintenance um, or image maintenance anymore. So no more install.wim files. We don't have to worry about the drivers. That's all handled through Windows Update for Business. No confusion for which one am I supposed to really be deploying here. And the time consuming of keeping all that up to date and training the staff, we don't need that anymore as well. So as we talked about those configuration profiles and compliance policies and, and applications, we're really just layering that on. So if you think about how you get a new phone, you get the device, it has the OS installed, and all we're doing is really changing the settings, adding applications that we feel we want on it, and we're off to the races. So it should be that simple. So with this, we're able to layer on those things, we're able to set up PowerShell scripts to run, Windows Update for Business. We're able to configure some update rings or feature updates, quality updates, and it just all layers on as the, as the process happens. And then simple auto, uh, redeployment. Windows Autopilot reset takes the device back to the business ready state. It removes all the personal files and apps but it retains that connection to Intune and the identity in Azure AD. So let's make this the new way for a traditional Windows deployment. This should be as simple as getting a new phone. Unbox that PC, turn it on, minimal user interaction, and that device is ready to go. So as we look at how this process works, Autopilot, you get the device, you boot it up. Um, autopilot kicks in. It authenticates and Azure AD joins it to Azure Active Directory. Via Intune, it starts to, it auto enrolls and starts to lay down those policies and settings. It installs the Microsoft 365 apps, configures updates with Windows Update for Business. And then it activates. And if you have um, Microsoft 365 E3 or E5, it'll step that up from pro to enterprise, enterprise on its own. And then it has that connection ready with Microsoft Endpoint Manager. And if you're doing a self-driven deployment, really it just removes that part where a user has to log in. So Windows Autopilot really simplifies that, simplifies that device deployment and management. It saves IT time by centralizing and streamlining everything from the device imaging 
and adds on those policy settings and apps provisioning, and then allows us to set up certain things for user data migration, which we'll talk about a little later. The key components that are needed for this process is the uh, autopilot, the MDM, and Azure AD. So with Windows Autopilot, it's really OEM optimized Windows. There's no need for the custom images, and we just layer those things on like we've discussed a little bit earlier. So software settings, updates, features, the user data, and we're ready for productive reuse. So here's a little overview of how Autopilot works. So the IT admin configures that Autopilot profile in Intune. It syncs over to the Autopilot service. A hardware vendor can load in device IDs for you. It syncs those devices across from the Autopilot service over to Intune. And then we can ship that directly to the employee. They log into it with the self-service deployment and they're off to the races. So really there's three simple steps to setting this up and getting it going. Registering the devices. So they can be registered automatically. You can do it yourself with a script or you can harvest those existing Intune managed devices automatically. So register devices, the OEM API, so that's with uh, uh, vendors like Dell, HP, Lenovo, they are able to add in multiple uh, devices for you so that they're in the autopilot service. If you work with a partner like CDW, H, uh, SHI, Insight, they can load that information through their partner center, or you can do it yourself and upload that information uh, via the portal or the Intune Graph API. So as we add that device to the autopilot deployment service, it syncs from the autopilot deployment service to Intune. You can force that sync manually or it happens every 12 hours. We then have that Azure AD object created for the device and has attributes like the ZTD ID, order ID or purchase order. And we can create dynamic groups based off of that information so that it will automatically and asynchronously, synchronously uh, assign that autopilot profile within uh, autopilot. Next, we assign a profile. So we use Intune to select profile. Uh, you can set up multiple profiles and have uh, it assigned to multiple device or different devices. There's a configuration that's needed. If we assign it through the AD groups, it'll it can automatically do that. And if we use the dynamic groups, then it even automates that a little bit further. So the autopilot profile, this is what it looks like in the configuration settings. So we can hide things like privacy settings or the license terms. Uh, we can decide whether it's Azure AD join, which is what we're talking about today, or hybrid Azure or hybrid Azure AD join. Uh, you can set what type of user you want. Do you want the people to be administrator or a standard user right off, right off the get-go? Uh, Pre-provision -deploy, pre deployment is an option as well. That's really where your IT staff takes it and goes through the main provisioning first. So you may want to do this for executives because you don't want to give them the device and have them sit and wait for the provisioning to happen. Uh, the pre-provisioning as a deployment person, you would log into it, run it through the autopilot process, and at the end, it then asks you to reseal the device. Once you do that, it won't assign a user in Intune as a primary user until you give it to that end user and they log in. Uh, you can also set a, a, a name template here. Things like you can use serial numbers or random digits and have a prefix before that as well. So the enrollment status page, this applies policies, apps, and setting be settings before the user gains access to the desktop. It shows the deployment status. By clicking on the show details button or lines there, it'll show exactly what's happening. And this is to make sure that we're delivering that compliant secure device and the minimum baselines are set up. 
So the settings that you're allowed to control is really what happens when errors happen or a failure. Uh, you can have a u end user reset the device if the installation error occurs. You can set so that uh, certain applications need to be installed before a user would be, have access to the desktop. So like Office or if you use 7-Zip or things like that, you can make sure that all those applications are there and available to the user. And lastly is deploy. So you boot up each device, connect it to the network, enter your credentials. If it's not, um, if it's a self-deploy, and you're off to the races. So here, we're going to see a short video of what that deployment really looks like. So first things first, you need to join it to a network. And next, we're going to be authenticating to Azure AD. So you need your username and with Azure Active Directory, you're able to add your logos so that when it boots up to the authentication screen, you can have your custom logos or a custom your your uh, organization's name. Here, this person's going through a password list sign in with their uh, phone. Now it's going to enroll the device in Intune. And then we're going to see the enrollment status page and how that goes through. And this is what the end user would be seeing. And once those apps all get installed and go through, it's going to go through to the desktop for the end user, and they'll be able to begin using the device. And in this example, once it does get through to the desktop screen, they do have OneDrive, uh, OneDrive known folder move configured to silently sign that person in and start syncing their desktop documents and pictures automatically, which is something we'll be discussing in a little bit on how that helps end users. We're almost to that point. And you'll see a toast notification coming up that they're syncing their OneDrive. So some Windows Autopilot scenarios. Uh, User-driven mode, that's what we were looking at there. You can do a hybrid Azure AD join, but that's not what we're talking about today. A self-deploy mode, which can be used for things like kiosks, or shared devices. You can autopilot existing devices. Hopefully, you don't have any Windows 7 left, but if you did, you can do that. And then the pre provisioning. So you can use your IT staff to pre provision, or if you do have a partner where you want them to do it for you, that's also another option. So have it your way, your device, your experience. Has anybody had an issue in the past where you get that new device, you're missing some files or applications or settings? You know, wouldn't that be nice that right at the first login, you have everything that you need? So with some configuration settings and autopilot, we can certainly do that. The so OneDrive for Business known folder move. This is the modern re folder redirection. It's going to back up uh, those, those folders to your OneDrive. And you're able to recover those accidentally deleted files and folders and back up that workstation data for the user so that on that device they're currently on, it has all that information. It's backing it up to OneDrive. As soon as I get that new device and OneDrive known folder move kicks in on the new device, it starts to pull that information back down to my computer. It's really a very seamless, uh, very, very nice feature to have. And we'll talk about a, a use case where we use this to help with a migration in a little bit. Enterprise state roaming. 
This is a setting within Azure Active Directory under the devices that you can enable. And it's really going to help with configuring a new device and bring those settings over for a user that are more kind of little annoyances that they don't set up and, and think about. Uh, this also does things like your screensaver and um, background pictures and things like that as well. And then Microsoft Edge uh, Enterprise Sync. So the nice thing about this is that if you allow your users to log into Edge with their corporate credentials, it can sync all of this information. So as soon as I sign into that browser on a different computer or even on uh, an iOS or Android device, I'm able to access all of that information. Another nice feature of that is if you're on an iOS device or an Android device and you're using Edge, you can send that web page from the device to your desktop and continue reading where you left off. And lastly, applications. We talked about this earlier. If you assign these applications by user groups, as soon as if I'm in that user group and I had 7-Zip on my old laptop, I log in, it's going to install 7-Zip on my new laptop. So we're e easily able to transition really everything that I do on a daily basis from one device to another, and it just layers all of that information on. So let's talk about an acquisition use, use case that um, I personally worked on. It was an Intune to Intune migration. So the client preferences were that it was an Azure AD join so that they could advance their modern management story. They didn't want to have to set up trust between the domains. They didn't want to join the computers to the domain. They didn't want to have the users connect to the VPN to do any of the transitioning from uh, one organization to the other. And they really wanted the really zero user interaction during that whole uh, migration. So they didn't want them to have to run any scripts or, or do anything. It, we, they really wanted it simplified as much as possible for those end users. So how did we accomplish this? We did approximately um, 25 to 50 migrations per wave and migrated a little over 250 computers. We probably had only issues with about two or three people, and they were more hardware issues that we um, had an issue with. So we utilized the OneDrive known folder move. So we backed up those files, uh, set that OneDrive known folder move on the source tenant so that we backed up all of their information to OneDrive. And then we used a quest tool to migrate the information from one tenant to the other. Then we configured that autopilot process on the target tenant. And use, utilizing an Intune Win32 app, we were able to have a PowerShell script drop a autopilot configuration file onto the computer in the source tenant, which had the configuration for the, the target tenant. So when, they, when we sent a wipe command from the source Intune environment, it reset the computer gave them a new build of Windows. They, when it booted up to that logon screen, it had the target tenant's logo and uh, company name. They logged in with those target tenant credentials, and the computer was provisioned with apps and the configuration for that target tenant. Uh, all in all, it took about 30 minutes per computer for them to get set up. And it was one of the smoothest transitions that they've they've ever seen. They were very, very happy with how that all happened. So how do you get started with this? Take a machine, reset it, go through the out-of-box experience, and just Azure AD join the device. Test it out. See what you can and can't do. You know, are there policies that are prohibiting you in your, your organization that you can't access? Keep it simple and iterate as you go along. Don't make it harder on yourself. And then configure autopilot and those endpoint manager policies to and set up applications. And then run through a few tests of autopilot and see how that works for you. So some final thoughts 
if you're not aware, you can get a developer account. Uh, they're free. They give you E5 licenses. So you can, if you want to do this in a sandbox and not in your production tenant, you can monkey around there and get used to how those settings are. And you can spin up a Hyper-V uh, uh, computer and Azure AD join it in your developer tenant and just start playing around with it. Make incremental changes to progress to that end goal and don't start with the most complicated users first, solve the easiest use cases first. And as Voltaire said, perfect is the enemy of good. Uh, thank you for uh, attending my session. If you have any questions, please reach out to me, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, send me an email. Um, happy to help and, and share some knowledge with you as needed. Um, please provide some feedback. This is uh, my first time presenting, so interested to see what people think. Thank you. Excellent job, Ben. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you very much, Ben. Appreciate you joining us. Very good look at autopilot, super interesting technology. Um, at my company, we do a lot of device sales and imaging, and we've been following along quite a bit, so that's excellent stuff. Does anybody have any questions for Ben at all? Drop them in the chat. Feel free to come off mute, any of that stuff. All right, well, if not, I will go ahead and get the $25 winner of the, the session picked out here. I have put kind of the participants in the conversation. Oh, it does. Uh, ben, are you still on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, looks like uh, Ryan has a question. Says, any tips on troubleshooting deployment? <laughs> With a smiley face. I think that's a pretty <laughs> um, open-ended question. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's there's ways of collecting the logs uh, that I can I can um, send some information over to you if you want. Uh, that's probably the the easiest way. There is uh, some features in Intune where you can look at the autopilot uh, deployments and it might give you some information there. But I found that uh, gathering the logs directly from the device is usually the best way to do that. Uh, so if you you probably want to attach a USB or something to it to grab those logs. I'm uh, interested from my perspective too, uh, what's been your luck with gathering hardware hashes for manufacturers? Um, have you had better luck getting those hardware hashes from say, in order to enroll your devices in, in autopilot from certain manufacturers over others? Um, I haven't personally done a lot with the manufacturers. Uh, you know, usually when as concurrency, when we're setting those up, we're doing testing with just the the setup. Um, so there's a, a script that you can run and you can either dump that script to a USB device or there's a new online option where if you do a hyphen online after the script, it will prompt you to log into your tenant and you can upload those hashes directly. That's probably the best way to do that. Uh, I think most vendors nowadays uh, are willing and, and partners are willing to do that without a cost, as, as far as I'm aware. Awesome. So it's it's really if you, if you want them to pre-provision, then they're they're going to add that cost on top of it. I, I know that some of those vendors they uh, make it a little bit easier. I know for Dell, for instance, if I were to just go on their website and, and select one of their business class machines and actually ask if I want to um, enroll it into autopilot and ask for my tenant ID. So Very those cool. those are some things that you can do. And then as Ben mentioned, there's a way that you can even take a brand new machine out of the box, go into that F, uh, I think it was, uh, was it Shift, Shift F10? F10. Yep. yep. And then uh, you can connect using a PowerShell and you can import that machine's hash directly right out of the box. So if you are working with a vendor that maybe right out of the gate isn't helping you get those hashes into the cloud, you can still, you know, it's a little bit of a, it's not necessarily zero touch, but there's there's some ways to make that happen a little easier too. Right. Thank you, gentlemen. Any more questions? Anything anybody's curious about? Well, while people are thinking here, I will give away, um, oh, thank you, Ben. That's a great link here. 
And like I said, uh, we, we mentioned this earlier, but we will be putting all these sessions up on YouTube. So if you want to go back and review any of the sessions or Ben's session here, um, look for that in the coming weeks. Uh, we don't have a firm date on when they're going to get up. There's a lot of video to edit and get uploaded to the cloud. So, oh, Eric has a quick question. Eric, you want to come off mute? Yeah, thank you. Um, and this is this is a really open-ended question as well. Um, but uh, for some of us that might not be the quickest on the uptake of this or have other things on our mind because we have so many other responsibilities in our job, are there any good um, localized resources, a place that um, maybe simplifies some of, kind of like the way that your slides simplify the layout, um, the, you know, maybe the, the, maybe a step up from the lay person could go and take a look and look for, you know, things like best practices, we'll put that in quotes, um, kind of uh, not necessarily gotchas, but just to, like things to think about when restructuring an organization um, when trying to move this direction. Um, you know, there's there's tons of blogs out there. I, I don't have one specifically in mind. I know there's a guy, uh, Michael Niehaus, who has kind of written about autopilot to death. So, you know, he's the, and he's the guy in the importing a device hash directly into Intune. Um, I don't know off the top of my head if, of a blog that really walks through and simplifies it. Um, but maybe that's something I can write up and share with the community. <laughs> well, not to put too much on you, but uh, thank you very much. I appreciate the answer. Yeah. All right. Anything else, guys? I'm going to quick, uh, the people have been kind of participating in the conversation here. I'm going to go ahead and spin my magic wheel here. And we will, let me present real fast. We'll pick a winner, but don't go away yet. If you haven't grabbed the survey link, make sure you do that. That's how you get registered in a prize. It's how Ben and Concurrency and the other presenters get feedback on their presentations. Um, whether they like the content, other content you might want to hear from them, other topics, that kind of stuff, and how uh, the Office 3, MN 365 user group board is doing uh, in presenting these these uh, sessions and these workshop days to you. So real quick, I'm going to pick the right window. All right, so I'm going to spin. And Ryan is our winner. So Ryan, if um, if you could just pop your, let me see if I can actually pull your email address. Oh, but it looks like you are authenticated, so I can. I have your email address. So congratulations, Ryan, and thank you very much again to Concurrency and and Ben for your time. We really appreciate it. It's great to have uh, community people that can contribute to these. So thank you very much. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Have a good weekend.